as you start out making candles, you're not quite sure what tools you need. And you buy some of this and some of that and use what you think is going to work best. And as you get rocking and rolling, you start to find the products that become your favorites. And they become your favorites because they make your job easier. And let's face it, as much as we love making candles, we also want to be able to do it more efficiently, take less time doing it, so that eventually we can start to make a profit. Hi, welcome back. I'm Lisa with Candles by Sincerely Ice Blue. On this channel, we talk all about the business of making candles, selling candles, and all of the bits and pieces that fall in between. And yes, I always say it, but there is a lot. There is a lot that goes into this business from making them to selling them. And then all of the follow-up thereafter, which we haven't even started to talk about. So if you're interested in any of that, don't forget to click on my subscribe button. Become part of the channel. Would love to have you back. And if you're already tuning in regularly, don't forget to click on that little bell so that you're notified as new videos come out. So it is my favorite time of the year. It's Christmas time, it's holiday season. And as you can see, my little snow buddy here, snowmen are actually my favorite part of the holiday season. My house is decorated with a lot of them. They're my favorite thing in regards to decorating for the holidays. And so what I wanna to talk to you about today are exactly that, my favorite thing. I've been doing this a while, I have developed what my favorite things are when it comes to making candles. And they're things that make my job easier and smoother. And I just thought I wanted to share it with you because they're my favorite things. So let's take a look at what they are. Okay, first, when I first started, I ordered a kit that came with a pitcher and a stirring spoon and a couple little pieces and odds and ends. And we were using this very short spoon that had a handle about the length of a regular spoon. And since then, I have upgraded to a much larger spoon. And this little guy is one of our favorites. And it comes in a set of two. I got it from Amazon and I'm gonna drop everything I tell you about today, the links for you to take a look at. This and spoon has a wonderful reach and it will make stirring easier. Okay, next. If you've watched one of my most recent videos, you heard me talking about one of the biggest problems we had was that our wicks kept floating. And it didn't matter which one of the little glue dots we would buy and try. A quarter to half of the wicks would float when the wax melted low enough that they could free up. And it did it especially on all of my tea lights, which drove me crazy. So I have since stopped using the glue dots. And now I use a Gorilla Glue hot gun with Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks that are for high temperature. And these have been working wonderful. And this is a little glue gun. I have seen these everywhere from Amazon to Ace Hardware, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart. So these hot glue guns are not hard to find. It is a very common tool used in the world of crafting. And if you're doing other types of craft, you may already have a glue gun, but you want to upgrade to the Gorilla Glue Gun because it is made for higher temperatures. Sometimes if you use just a standard crafting glue gun, the glue can't withstand the heat or the higher temperature as that candle starts to melt down. So this is now my second favorite thing because it has saved the day in regards to keeping my wicks from floating. Ever since we started using it, no more floating wicks at all. Thumbs up to the grill glue. Okay, next. When it comes to cleanup, it's kind of like doing laundry. You like getting dressed up and going out. Nobody likes to do laundry. Nobody likes to do laundry. Same thing with dishes. I love to eat, but I sure don't like to do dishes. I love to make candles. I don't like the cleanup. There is nothing fun about the cleanup. So 
what makes cleanup just a little bit easier. And I started using the spray bottle with the rubbing alcohol. And instead of using paper towels, because as you know, making candles, you might as well buy stock in paper towels because you go through them like mad. I started buying the microfiber towels. And when you clean up, so after we do a pour, I will wipe out still the inside of a pitcher or my double boiler. I'll still wipe that out immediately while it's warm with a paper towel. And then I set those paper towels aside and I actually either use them to make my fire starters or I use them myself outside in my bonfire as fire starter because they have wax on them. But I still need to clean that out. So sometimes, depending on the fragrance load, I'll still wash that with soapy warm water. Or if it was just a light load, I can just go right away to the alcohol spray and the microfiber cloth for cleanup. And even if you're using the soapy water, you may have noticed that sometimes the fragrance still tends to linger inside of your pitcher. So after you wash it, after you've wiped out that wax and then washed it, you can use the rubbing alcohol and the spray just makes it easy because I can spray around the inside of the vessel and there's a lot less waste. So I highly recommend this. I found them at CVS and they're not really easy to find the spray bottles. So if you can't find them, you can go to the dollar store, buy some spray bottles and just put the rubbing alcohol in them. But highly recommend using the spray bottles for cleanup and microfiber cloths. Okay, so our next thing, or my next favorite thing, has to do with wicking. Now, if you've watched, again, any of my previous videos, you know that I've declared war on wicks. They're my arch rival right now. I will get them someday, but right now they're winning. Score is like 100 for wicks and 2 for Lisa. So, anyway... What I did find that I love though is tools to use to center your wicks. When I first started, it was really hard to make sure that my wick was centered. And I remember finding a couple times that that wick was just off center enough that it, when it burned, it would tunnel. And it wasn't the wick size that was the problem, it was that I didn't center the wick properly. So what I have found is wick centering tools. The first one I'm gonna show you is a diagonal wick centering tool. And this one is good for the Dollar Tree square candle jars. Now, one thing my husband pointed out to me, which cracked me up, was if you have a glass and this doesn't fit in it, you can set it underneath and line it up so that you can still see it from the bottom. So this is another one with two. And a lot of these also fit on the inside like this one does. I just drop it in the center. Once I put my wicks in, I can just dump that out and it comes right out, but my wicks are nicely in place where they belong. And then there's different sizes on the round ones. And for these to be able to be used inside your jar, you're gonna have to know what your diameter on your jar is. So for instance, this was a smaller one and I was able to just drop that right down in. But if I ordered the bigger one and it doesn't fit and you order the wrong size, remember if it's a clear jar, you can just set it down on the table and then set your jar on top of it and you'll still be able to get that centering. Highly recommend these. These will be, these will help you make your job so much easier when you're putting your wicks because you can clean your vessels using your alcohol and your microfiber towel, and then you can just line your vessels up on the counter, drop these down in the center, and then boom, 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 boom. It's so much easier and faster to get your candles wicked. So again, wick centering tools, highly recommend them. One of my favorites. Okay. Next favorite. I love this. I wish I would have bought a different version of it, but it still works. So when I first started, I was using a double boiler, which works fine, it's great. But when you wanna start making a lot more candles at once, my double boiler only held a small percentage of wax. We could only do three to four candles versus when I wanted to do a larger batch. I wanted to do 10 of them, it took a lot longer. I got myself a little Presto Pot. Now this guy is wonderful. 
I am going to tell you, if you order one, I recommend getting one with the spout on it because that would make it so much easier to be able to set this and open the spout and pour into the pitcher. I don't have that, so what I actually bought instead to go with it, the ladle. And this one is a small ladle. I also have a really large one that works well too. I'll drop again all this information in the description for you. But it works great because we can just scoop it out and put it right into the pouring pitchers. So if we're doing multiple scents, we can still fill this up with wax, separate it off into different pitchers, add the fragrance oil, stir, and then pour it into one of my other favorite items, which we're about to talk about and get all my candles poured. So if I had a spout on this, makes it a little easier, but this still works fine. You can get yourself the stainless steel ladle if you already have one of these. If not, highly recommend getting one with the spout and it cleans up beautifully. So the inside is Teflon coated. So as soon as we're done with the wax, even in between batches. So if I'm making 15 candles, as soon as this is empty and we've got the fragrance and everything in there, soon as my husband gets that out into a pitcher, I start cleaning it and I'll take the towel, I'll wipe it out immediately, and then I can go ahead and follow right behind with that rubbing alcohol. I don't even need to put it in the soapy water in between all of my pourings. And it takes the scent out using the rubbing alcohol. It's wonderful. So get yourself a Presto pot. And if you're just starting out, go ahead and get a smaller one. And you can always upgrade it as you go. There's many different sizes. If you want to save money, it is more expensive to get the ones with the spout, which is why I went with the one without. But sometimes what we'll do is we'll take the little mechanism to plug it in off. And my husband will just pick this up by the handles. The handles do stay cool. And he'll just pour it right into the pouring pitchers versus using a ladle. So whatever is going to work for you, but I do recommend this. Now, you are going to want to keep your eyes on it because it's going to melt faster than your double boiler does. So if you're already using a double boiler, make sure that you're watching this. It will melt faster and hotter and you don't want to scorch or overheat your wax. So that was one of my favorites. Presto Pot. Highly recommend it. Get yourself one. Okay. Next favorite. So right now we're talking about the different tools that will make your job easier and faster when making candles. And if you saw one of my last videos, again, you heard me talking about this. You can actually see this in action in one of my videos, but it is a batter pourer. That's what it's used for is pouring batter. And I saw a video on it that popped up on one of my timelines, decided to give it a go, and wow, is it amazing. And I got the larger size that is about two liters. It comes with a nice little stand. Anyway, this guy is amazing. And you can see on the inside, it's also stainless steel. It's easy to clean. It's got a little uh, spout at the end. So it looks just like a big funnel with a mechanism that allows it to open and close. That's all there is to it. And when you are using this, I recommend only filling it just underneath where the spring is. So if you watch my video that shows this guy in action, I also show you a close up of what I'm talking about, but this will save you a lot of time. It will keep you from dripping wax onto things. It will just make your life wonderfully easier in regards to being able to produce wax melts and candles so much easier and faster. If I had to pick a number one thing you should invest in, if you've only got a, a budget of 40 or $50 to buy yourself something, I would recommend this as what you should get next. So highly recommend this. Definitely put it on your list for your business. I decided to finally give in and get myself one of these and wowzers, again, game changer. And it is just a simple heat gun. That's all it is. It's an 1800 watt heat gun. Why do you need this? Because if you're working with soy or you are just struggling like I am with wicks, you are going to need a heat gun. It saved me so much money and having to 
redo candles. And whenever you re-wick a candle, or especially if you're doing it even wickless, you have to be able to melt that wax flat again. Or if you poured your candle and after it cooled, you have a sinkhole. And it's totally a bummer because you're looking at your candle and you think, how can I fix that? You can just take this heat gun and I do it on low. I've never used the high because it gets quite warm as it is and just kind of move it around on the top. Now, one thing is you don't have to completely melt your candle. You'll be able to look in there and you're still going to see the hole. You're still going to see uh, maybe some air bubbles coming up. And... What you're not seeing is that the wax will continue because now it's warm to, to melt and it'll fill into those holes. And when it dries and sets up again, you're going to notice a nice smooth flat top. So get yourself a heat gun. You can also use this for some of the other candle projects that you may be seeing on the YouTube channels or on other people's reels where they're doing the marbling or if you want to add some accents at the end. So you made your candle, it's beautiful, but you want to add a little bit of biodegradable glitter. Or you've made some uh, molds with little flowers or leaves, or you have some dried flowers or adornments that you want to add to the top of your candle. What you're going to want to do is heat the top of that, get it a little bit soft so that when you set your adornments on, they stay. So get yourself a heat gun. Again, you can get these at an Ace Hardware store. Don't use a hairdryer. A lot of people say they've tried that, but hair dryers blew a lot of air. You will end up with wax everywhere. I didn't do it. I didn't try it. I just know that that's what's going to happen. So don't do a hair dryer. Invest in one of these. They're not that expensive. And again, you can get them at Michael's, Joanne Fabrics, Ace Hardware, um, Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's. Don't use a super high powered heavy duty one that your husband may have and use in the workshop. Don't use those. Get one that's more designed for crafting. This one is only 1800 watts and it's 110 volts. So it plugs into a standard outlet and it works wonderfully. And it's just plenty. It's just enough. So highly recommend that as well. Alrighty. So now we're down to the very last thing. And if you're like me, when you started out, you didn't necessarily realize the expenses that come along with starting a candle business. And so you start to look for ways to cut costs. How can I save money? Because testing is expensive, but it's a necessary evil. You have to test your candles and you're testing them because you have to develop the right formula of wick and wax and fragrance oil and the vessels you want to use and so on and so on and so on. Even though you're reading and using the tools and you're understanding that the wick you chose should be for your size vessel and it's okay for use or recommended for use with the wax that you've chosen and then you go to burn it and it tunnels or it's just burning too hot and you still have a pretty much full candle and it's no good. What do you do with it? I got a apple corer. Crazy, right? Let me tell you, this has saved me so much time and headache because you can just take your candle, and this isn't one that needs to be rewicked, but you can take your candle and you can take this right down the center, right over that wick, and it'll go all the way down. I usually give it a couple turns and then I'm going to pull it straight up. And when I pull it up, sometimes it comes up with the wick. More often than not, because I'm using the Gorilla Glue now, it leaves the wick in place. Not a problem. Because then all you have to do is take a pair of tweezers, like needle nose pliers or tweezers, reach down in there, grab that wick at the base, and just pull straight up, and it'll pop right out nice and clean. Now, if it doesn't come out clean, sometimes I take a spoon and I just go around in that little hole. But what it does is it lets me re-wick this candle. And I just take my hot glue gun. I put some hot glue on the wick tab of my new wick. I drop that right down the center, 
Then I take my spoon or my fingers and I put the wax that I removed back in around the wick. I take my heat gun and I go around the top and sometimes around the outside of the jar if it's got a lot of tunneling and I get that melted. I'll put a wick holding tool on there so I'll make sure that that wick stays nice and straight and tight just like I had. You're doing a brand new pour. You want to secure your wick. And then you're going to let that cure at least 24 hours overnight to set. And when it sets back up, all you got to do is trim your wick and start your testing with your new wick. And you can do this several times. And it works wonderfully. It's beautiful because, again, it has saved me so much time and money. And if you're struggling, if you're just starting out, or if you have that vessel where you're just struggling to get it wicked, this will help you be able to continue testing, not have to do a brand new pour and then wait two weeks for it to cure and then stockpile, you know, so many different vessels that you can't use again. So... There's that. Those are my favorite things in regards to making candles that have made my life so much easier. And I know they'll make your life easier too. Now, a couple other things I want to tell you. When I first started out, I got myself all set up. I ordered the boxes for packing and labels and all kinds of things. I'm going to tell you a couple things to also help you save money and keep you from wasting money where you don't need to. Number one, do not order any packing peanuts because most of the things that you're going to be ordering from your candle suppliers already come with packing peanuts. I have a seven foot bag of them because I ordered them not knowing this and I'll probably never even get around to using that at this point. So speaking of being able to use the things that you're gonna be getting when you order your supplies, that's your cardboard boxes. So I keep some of them and cut them down to use them for storage. But another thing we do with them is we flatten them out. These cardboard pieces are wonderful for covering your countertops when you're pouring because the last thing you wanna do is ruin your granite countertops or your hardwood dining room table or your glass tabletops and get wax everywhere. So I recommend cutting up your boxes, using them to protect your surfaces. And then again, if you start making the fire starters, you can chop these up into little tiny pieces, use them in your fire starters. You can use them for kindling yourself and you can recycle them. They don't get that messy, but they do catch all of the drips. And the last thing that you're going to get when you're ordering, probably even from Amazon, is the brown paper. This brown paper is great as well because I use it on my countertops at my station where we're pouring fragrance. And because it's already crinkled up, it doesn't always lay flat. And sometimes if you can get those pieces flat enough, I use them instead of the cardboard to cover my counters. Um, it doesn't work great with wax melts because it's bumpy, but it works fine for the candle jars because the candles are heavier. So I recommend keeping those. You can also then use those when you start packaging. You can take your candles, wrap them up nice and neat in that, secure them, put a nice thank you sticker on them, then put them in the box with your peanuts and ship them off. So don't go out and spend a lot of money on brown packing paper because you can use what you're going to be getting as you start ordering all of your candle supplies. So that's what I have for you today. A whole lot of tips and tricks on what you can use to make your job easier because we're talking about making candles so that we can get to the selling part and different ways to save money, where to spend your money, and maybe ways to help you cut costs in your own candle business. So if you liked what we talked about today, click on that subscribe button, click on that little bell. Hopefully I'll see you again soon. And for today, obviously live your life out loud, but again, it's my favorite time of the year. So this week I want you to take some time to do something for yourself during this favorite time of the year. What's your favorite thing to do at the holidays? Get a piece of pie, go get a cocktail with friends, make cookies, dance to your favorite holiday music, jam out to your favorite holiday music. It doesn't matter. 
and enjoy the holiday season with your friends and family. So until next time, I will see you soon and happy holidays.